very good morning my dear students i hope you all are doing great let's continue the topic so we need to continue a little bit from the electrostatics concept so that is about capacitors and we will be moving into a chapter called current electricity from where we will be studying about resistors today from electrostatics we study about capacitors from current electricity we study about resistors because most of the things are similar in capacitors as well as resistors most of the things we deal like similarly so that's the reason i'm just combining these two concepts today let's begin let's talk about the resistors my dear students first then at the end we'll talk about the capacitors this is a resistor a resistor a wire a conducting wire or any electrical appliance we consider as a resistor it is represented with the symbol r you know there is an electric current passing through this resistor this is a positive terminal and this is the negative terminal that means this is the high potential and the b is the point is at low potential in the last class how we have discussed when there is a potential difference between these two points so that's what v a minus v b which is equal to current passing through this resistor into resistance of that resistor so in simple words we'll be writing v is equal to ir so this is according to ohm's law my dear children ohm's law and most of the students think that this is only the form of the ohm's law but in real in reality it's not there is another form of ohm's law so which is equal to j bar is equal to sigma e bar what is j bar current density what is j bar here current density and what is d bar e bar here right so e bar you know it's a electric field intensity and we already know about sigma sigma is conductivity sigma is conductivity so remember this this is the another form of ohms law in terms of j bar and e bar and sigma so this is another form of ohms law now let's focus more on the ohms law my dear children because the resistance concept will start appearing in this chapter from ohms law only okay so coming back to this situation here according to ohms law resistance is equal to v by r so if they draw a graph like this this is voltage and this is the current and if they draw the graph like this this is current and this is the voltage and the slope of this graph will be representing resistance so which is tan theta here tan theta will be representing the resistance here and here if the graph is looks like this and this slope of this graph is representing 1 by resistance and this 1 by resistance is nothing but g what is this g this is the conductance the reciprocal of the resistance is the conductance slope is equal to 1 by r which gives you the quantity called g which is conductance 1 by r is conductance and the relation between this conductance this conductivity we will be discussing soon all right now resistance is equal to rho l by a because this is not the first time you are learning so you know this formula resistance is equal to rho l by a and have a look at it 
This row is called resistivity. What is this row, my dear children? It's a resistivity. And this is L and this is A. Carefully observe. This resistance is depending on length of the conductor. Resistance is depending on area of the conductor. This resistance is depending on nature of the conductor. This resistance is depending on temperature of the conductor. There are so many factors affecting the resistance value. So many factors like this. So for example, look at this resistance and the length. Rho is a constant which is resistivity. This resistivity is depending only on two things. Nature of the material and the temperature. Nature of the material and the temperature. And before we talk about the length and area of cross section, we talk about the temperatures. Okay. So generally for the conductors, resistance, generally for the conductors, resistance is directly proportional to the temperature. Not only the resistance and resistivity also, resistivity also directly proportional to the temperature. So you may get confused. Sir, here resistance, here resistivity, what is this? Look at this formula. In this formula, if length is 1 meter, area is 1 meter square and the resistance, I can write it as resistivity, right? So that's the reason resistance and resistivity I am representing as same. Okay. For conductors, resistance is increases or the temperature increases resistance or resistivity also will increase. For example, for example, so in case of semiconductors, my dear children, in case of semiconductors, if the temperature increases, resistance or resistivity will decrease. And remember this, remember this. Okay, so there is a relation here. So rho, that means resistivity of insulator is greater than resistivity of semiconductor is greater than resistivity of alloys which is greater than resistivity of metals. Look at this. Always resistivity is greater for the insulator and it is very small for the metals. You remember this one. Okay. Now let's talk something more about something more about temperature dependence of the resistance. Let us talk something more about temperature dependence of the resistors. All right. Now let's start. We know generally RT is equal to R0 into 1 plus alpha delta T. The general expression for the relation between resistance and the temperature. Have a look at it. R suffix T means what? Resistance at some particular temperature. Resistance at 30 degrees Celsius for example. And what is R0 here? R0 is resistance at 0 degrees Celsius. And this is 1 plus alpha. This alpha is important. It is coefficient of thermal resistance. Coefficient of thermal resistance. So this is alpha. And delta T is the change in temperature. So remember this. From this, so the expression for alpha you can write. Alpha is equal to, it is RT minus R0 divided by R0 into delta T. So this is one expression, one expression. And sometimes in the neat exam, the question will be asked like this, my dear students. Listen, listen, this is the important thing. So R1 is equal to R0 into 1 plus alpha T1. That means at a particular temperature, the resistance. And there is another resistance at another temperature, at a particular, this is at an instant. At an instant, it's not the change in temperature, my dear students. There's no concept of change in temperature here. At a particular temperature, 36 degrees Celsius, the resistance of the wire. At 20 degrees Celsius, resistance of the wire, right? So this is equation 1 and this is equation 2. Sometimes the questions were asked like this. So equation 1 divided by 2, if you do it, 
So this will be 1 plus alpha delta theta uh, T1 and 1 plus alpha T2. Just cross multiplication you can make here. R1 plus R1 alpha T2 which is equal to R2 plus R2 alpha T1. Okay. So now what can I write here? R1 minus R2. This minus R2 comes here. That is minus R2. And rest of the things. R2 alpha T1 minus this goes to the other side. R1 alpha T2. So R1 minus R2 is equal to alpha if you take common. R2 T1 minus R1 T2. And from here alpha you get it. Quotient of thermal resistance. What is that? So the numerator it is uh, R1 minus R2. There is a denominator R2 T1 minus R1 T2. Okay. Clear. So mostly the question will be asked based on this. That means this one. Sometimes if the question paper to be given as a higher level, the question goes for this also. You should be ready for doing it. Now the point is resistance here I have given. Resistance is depending on length and area of cross section. How it depends on length and area of cross section we will be doing right now students. Right now. Okay. Now have a look at it. Resistance is equal to rho L by A. For example, there is a wire. I have a wire like this. This is the wire is cut into the two parts. Exactly cut into the two parts. Right? So when I cut into the two parts, there is no problem with area of cross section. For same rod, same wire. So the area of cross sections will be same for the both. And anyhow, this is the material when I cut it into the two parts, the same material only I get. So the rho, it's depending on nature of the substance that is not changing. So that's why it is also constant. So what can I write? Resistance is directly proportional to the length. In this case, when you change the length without changing area of cross section, the resistance is directly proportional to L. When L is increased, two times the resistance also increases two times okay and one more point here for example instead of cutting what i have done you know i'm just stretching this wire when i stretch this wire the length changes area changes but the volume remains constant and resistance is equal to rho by l sorry rho into l into in the place of area, I can write in terms of volume. Area is equal to volume by length. Observe carefully. Area is equal to volume by length. Rho L square by V. Yes. When I change the length, volume remains constant. Density, sorry, resistivity remains constant. So then I can write R is directly proportional to L square. I can write R1 by R2 is equal to L1 by L2 whole square, my dear children. All right. Now, now R is equal to rho L by A. Listen carefully. R is equal to rho L by A, which is equal to rho into this length I am writing now in terms of volume. Length I am writing in terms of volume. So that is volume by area is the length. So this is volume by area divided by area. So this I can write rho v by a square. So then this I can write resistance is inversely proportional to a square. So R1 by R2 is equal to A2 by A1 whole square. And this I can also write in other way. It's a pi R2 square by pi R1 square old square. Pi pi gets cancelled. It is R2 by R1 old to the power 4. Very, very, very important formula. Very, very important formula. Very, very important formulas. One, two, three, four. Four formulas we have discussed here. Right? The very important areas. And we'll solve few numericals related to that. And before going into that. So, you know. <clears throat> carbon resistors. Right? And color code. 
so by using the color code how to find the resistance of a given resistor by using the color code how to find the resistance of a resistor okay so now we have already discussed there is a shortcut will be there this is the standard right all over the world mostly it is standard so what is that b b roy great britain's very good wife right and last g yes and it's gold silver no color so this is black brown red orange yellow green blue violet gray white gold silver no color you know first it starts from this it then multiplier then the error this it it starts from zero zero one two three four five six seven eight nine and multiplier 10 raised to zero 10 raised to 1, 10 raised to 2, 10 raised to 3, 10 raised to 4, 10 raised to 5, 10 raised to 6, 10 raised to 7, 10 raised to 8, 10 raised to 9. Understand? So this is 10 raised to minus 1, this is 10 raised to minus 2. That's a multiplier. And error, when it comes to error, so this is a 5%, 10%, and 20%, and that's error. Right? And how the questions will be asked, my dear students. And look at here. So this is what a resistor it's given. And the color code, color patches are mentioned like this. This is number one. Right? And this is the other one. Two. This is three, third color. And this is four, fourth color. So imagine this is given as yellow color and this is given as violet and this is given as white and this is given as silver. Understand? So that is yellow, violet, white and silver. These are the colors given. Now how to find the color code of the resistance? And listen, number one, why? So this is yellow, this is the digit 1, this is digit 2, right? So this is a multiplier, so this is the error, okay? That error, error is also called tolerance. Now, Y, number 1, sorry, yellow, digit 1, yellow, digit 1 is 4, yes. Digit 2, violet, digit 2, violet, it's 7, okay? 47 into, what is this white? White is a multiplier. 10 raised to 9, right? So this is ohms, plus or minus. So what is the tolerance here? So this is the error. It's S, silver. It's a 10%, understand? So this is the answer. So when the question is given like this, you can find the error like this. Or you can find the resistance of this color code resistor. You'll find like this. Okay? Clear? And let's move into the topics called combination of resistors so then we'll move into the topic combination of capacitors combination of the resistors okay so the first we'll be talking about the series combination of the resistors there is a resistance R1, there is a resistance R2 here. They are connected to a battery whose potential is V. Positive terminal is here, negative terminal is here. When we switch on the battery, there is a current I flowing through the circuit. You can see there is the same current is flowing through both the resistors. And we say that they are in the series combination when same current is flowing through them. All right. And one more thing. And this is the total energy associated with this battery. When a current is flowing through here, 
the from this total energy some amount of energy is spent here from the total energy some amount of energy is spent here in moving a charge from one place to another place through this resistor as well as through this resistor so that means total potential of the battery will be shared across each resistor so across the first resistor potential energy or the potential difference it's a v1 plus potential difference across the other resistor it's v2 now the current is same observe carefully current is same and one more thing when the current is same from v is equal to ir formula when current is same v is directly proportional to r what does it mean when the resistance is more potential drop across that resistor will be more so that v is directly proportional to r okay effective resistance is equal to r1 plus r2 plus r3 plus so on if there are n number of resistors like that effective resistance goes till till r n so effective resistance is just the sum of all the resistance connected in series okay r effective can be written as n into r when n number of equal resistors are connected in series combination r effective is equal to n into r okay the same way if we discuss about parallel combination of the resistors look at here so there is one resistance r1 here there is a resistance r2 here when they are connected in parallel combination have a look at this these two are connected parallel with a battery of potential v now look at this so if a current i is flowing here at this junction the current will have two paths so one current will goes like this the other current will goes in this way right so the current is splitting into the two paths ultimately the both current will reach here and becomes i once again and comes back to the negative terminal you know in a circuit always you remember current to direction always the aim of the current to start from the positive terminal and move back to the negative terminal that's the aim of the current my dear children all right now in this case in this case observe the total current is divided into two branches that means i is equal to i1 plus i2 and at this junction we are using this i is equal to i1 plus i2 and this is also called as kirchhoff's current rule or kirchhoff's junction rule about kirchhoff's laws we will be discussing in the next classes okay now coming back to this what about the potential difference across this the potential difference across this is v and the potential difference across this resistor is also v what is that v that potential is equal to the battery potential understand so potential across the each resistor is same as the battery potential when they connect in parallel combination okay in parallel combination for example in this case you observe v is same here and here r is different i is different so in this formula v is equal to ir when v is same i can write i is inversely proportional to r very important thing when resistance is more less current will flow through that particular resistor when resistance is more current passing through that is less for example this is 10 ohm and this is 2 ohm and the more resistance is here and the less current will flow through that particular branch okay now effective resistance 1 by r effective is equal to 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 plus 1 by r3 plus so on plus so on so now here there are two resistances we have considered and we will be focusing here okay when this is the formula for effective resistance and generally we say r effective is equal to r1 r2 divided by r1 plus r2 
okay in this case when n number of equal resistors are connected the, for example this is 10 ohm 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 so there are n number of 10 ohm resistors are connected in parallel combination and your 1 by r effective is equal to n into 1 by r observe so this is let me write r suffix s in series combination effective resistance so this let me write 1 by r suffix p in parallel combination effective resistance in some of the years in CET exams and NEET exams so there is a direct question based on this so from here what can you write from here what can you write so r suffix p is equal to listen r suffix p is equal to r by n and from here what can you write r suffix s is equal to n into r all right so if you divide these two this is equation number one and equation number two so r suffix p divided by r suffix t s is equal to r by n divided by n into r so r p by r s is equal to r by n into one by n r so beautiful equation you get it look at here r suffix p by r suffix s is equal to 1 by n square r suffix s is equal to n square into r suffix p if you know this n value you can get the relation between these two understand clear for example if n value is 4 see very important if n value is 4 what does it mean there are four equal resistors which are connected in series first then in parallel the ratio between rs and rp r the relation between rs and rp what is that rs is equal to 16 into rp so very very important question all right so there are so many numericals related to combination of resistors we will be discussing them a little later now it's time to start a capacitor it is time to start a capacitor what is a capacitor how the capacitors will be connected in this way all those things we will be discussing right now okay so my dear students what you do is after finishing the classes or during the classes whenever you get time you just revise the notes whatever we have whatever the notes you have you just revise it revise it right that will be the final revision before your exam okay now we will start about capacitors and capacitance capacitors and capacitance okay let's see that we know this capacitance is equal to generally its q is directly proportional to v what is q is directly proportional to v so this is the charge stored in a capacitor capacitor is a device which will store the amount of charges within it so that is charge stored the charge stored is depending on the potential of the capacitor so now q is equal to cv from here q by v is equal to c remember so capacitance is equal to q by v and this capacitance si unit is farad generally the farad is a bigger unit so that's the reason capacitors generally they represent in a microfarads right generally they represent in microfarads okay fine so coming back to the actual concept of capacitors listen my dear students everybody so there is a sphere solid sphere or allosphere whatever it may be it is given a charge it is given a charge positive charge for example so this is what the earth you know this is called we are going to find the capacitance of a isolated sphere so this is the isolated isolated charged sphere you know this isolated charged sphere is given a charge and it 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 behaves a capacitor with the earth 
right so the medium between them is the air you can see here here air will act as a dielectric here the air will act as a dielectric and the earth will act as one plate of the capacitor this is the another plate of the capacitor right so this will form a capacitor you know that is c is equal to 4 pi epsilon naught into r remember capacitance of a isolated capacitor 4 pi epsilon naught into r okay now now majorly the questions will be asked from here related to parallel plate capacitor okay so that's what we will be discussing now so there is a positively charged plate and there is a negatively charged plate and the distance between them is d here and there is an electric field you see here there is an electric field from positive charge to the negative charge or positive plate to the negative plate. You know, this electric field is equal to V by D. What is this E? Electric field intensity. V, the potential. This is at high potential. This is at low potential. So the potential on the capacitor is V. By distance between the two plates is D. So now, capacitance of the parallel plate capacitor is epsilon naught A by D. You know epsilon naught and A is area of the plates. What is that? Area of the plates and D is distance between the two plates. So this is also called as C naught epsilon naught A by D. For example, my dear students have a look at it. Imagine this is the positively charged plate and this is the negatively charged plate now when it is completely filled with a dielectric listen when it is completely filled with a dielectric and the capacitance of this imagine that c dash which is equal to k into epsilon naught a by d and which is c dash is equal to k into c dash in c naught and this k is equal to c by c naught Okay, so this C dash I am writing as C. So this is called the dielectric constant. This is called dielectric constant. And this dielectric constant we have already written as epsilon by epsilon naught. And this dielectric constant is also called as relative permittivity. Right? So like this. This is important. When you, when you insert a dielectric, what happens? The capacitance will increase. Remember, capacitance will increase. Now, one more point here I just wanted to mention. This is the complete, the dielectric is completely filled the space. If not, what happens? This is positive terminal, that means positive plate here. So, there is a negative plate here. So, the distance between them is D. There is air presence here. So, imagine there is a dielectric is placed and thickness of the dielectric is d by 2 for example okay keep it aside this is the dielectric k and the rest of space is occupied with the air so this capacitance you know so this capacitance is equal to imagine it's a epsilon naught a by d minus t into 1 minus 1 minus um, um, 1 by k. Simple. Epsilon naught a divided by d minus t into 1 minus 1 by k. What is the t? Thickness of the dielectric. For example, this is the general formula. This is the general formula, my dear students. Now, when you interfere, when, when you like substitute this value here. Imagine this is the metal okay simple imagine this is a metal and this t is equal to d by 2 what happens in this case let's see epsilon naught a by d minus d by 2 into 1 minus 1 by for the metal k value dielectric constant for the metal i have told you already for the conductor dielectric constant is infinite so this is 1 by infinity it's 0 and d minus d by 2 is d by 2 and epsilon naught a by d by 2 right d by 2 and this c is equal to 2 into epsilon naught a by d and that is 2 into c naught very important right 2 into c naught so very important this part very important this part 
ओके नाउ अबाउट पैरेलल प्लेट कैपेसिटर्स वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग मच मोर थिंग्स नाउ टुडे ओनली मच मोर थिंग्स एंड बिफोर दैट कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ द कैपेसिटर्स आल्सो वी विल डिस्कस राइट नाउ ओके आई एम जस्ट रबिंग दिस पार्ट combination of capacitors also will be discussing now combination of resistors is done now the combination of capacitors then we will be move on to the numericals also okay so there are two capacitors which are connected there are the parallel plate capacitors only okay so they have connected to a battery in the similar way how we have connected the resistors so this is voltage in the positive terminal negative terminal capacitance of this is c1 capacitance of this is c2 here what happens so when the current is flowing here that means the flow of charges so same amount of charges will be a flow here this is plus q and this is minus q this is plus q and this is minus q charge on the capacitor we only take the positive understand on the positive plate whatever the charge is there that's a charge on the capacitor we consider so here effective capacitance if you want in series combination 1 by c effective is equal to 1 by c1 plus 1 by c2 and the charge will be same so i am writing q is same here when q is same we have just now done q is equal to c clear so when q is same what happens c is inversely proportional to v c is inversely proportional to v more is the capacitance So less is the potential drop across that, right? Here also there is a potential. Here also there is a potential. Okay, and this V is equal to V one plus V two, and rest everything is same related to the same, exactly like the resistors. Now, so here when two capacitors are connected, when two capacitors are connected to a battery of voltage v by the children positive terminal negative terminal right so this is the c1 and this is c2 here similar similar concept here now the amount of charges will be stored and it is different because the path of the current is different here but the potential across this and the potential across this is similar like resistors is same right so a v is say total charge will be distributed like this q1 plus q2 plus q3 so on and q is equal to cv when a v is same so q is directly proportional to c capacitance is more more charge will be stored on it that's it so in this case in the parallel combination of the capacitors effective capacitance will be equal to c1 plus c2 plus c3 so on exactly reverse exactly reverse like a exactly reverse like resistors right so this is the combination of the capacitors now we will be solving and we will be solving so the numericals related to cap combinations numericals related to capacitor combinations and resistor combination in the next classes we will be discussing we will combine in a single circuit we will combine a capacitor and we will also keep a resistor in that case what happens that's different okay so in today's class separately we'll discuss about capacitors separately we'll discuss about resistors now these are the kind of problems are called short circuit problems the same similar numericals will appear in the resistors similar numericals will appear in the capacitors also no confusions so to avoid your complete confusions i'm just combining the resistors and the capacitors topic
there is 8 microfarad 8 microfarad they are in parallel and the combination will gives you direct addition right in case of parallel combination c is equal to c1 plus c2 okay so what is the answer 16 16 microfarad okay after that here you see so when a charge is flowing like this charge will directly reach to the negative terminal in this path this is the less resistance path or the less capacitance path so but the charge will goes here listen so there is some resistance will be applied so that's the reason it will avoid this path so the charge will directly goes to this path so that means when there is no charge is stored on it when there is no resistance is uh, opposed for this charge flow then we will will not include this in the effective resistance or effective capacitance so then only these two we will include in finding effective capacitance so the answer is 16 microfarad same situation here a current is flowing here it flows into the two i1 and i2 and at this junction what happens the total current will be flowing here the least resistance so least resistance path and these two no current flows and we will not include them in the effective resistance values so here these two 12 ohm resistors are in parallel then the effective resistance in this case it is 6 ohm previously we have just added 16 here if you add 24 that is wrong answer no confusions at the same point the confusion is clarified no confusions generally resistance we remember but capacitance will 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 write it similar to the resistance that's wrong okay look at this so there is a 14 volt battery is given here 3 microfarad and 4 microfarad and you carefully observe uh, q1 q2 is how much charges on each capacitor is how much so the total effective value let's find out you know q is equal to cv what is this c c effective for the complete circuits i am talking about c effective so what is that so q is equal to c effective value is 3 into 4 by 3 plus 4 c1 c2 by c1 plus c2 into 14 what is that 7 2s are so this is 24 coulomb as they are in series combination charge on this will be 24 coulomb charge on this also sorry micro coulomb 24 micro coulomb charge on this also 24 micro coulomb no confusions 24 micro coulomb because the capacitance they are given in terms of micro farad now coming back to this so this case you might have solved so many times where all these capacitors are in parallel so effective capacitance is c plus c plus c it is 3c in case of effective resistance what you will get now so you know effective resistance you get it as r by 3 that's a difference that's the difference that's the difference and the very important question i'm giving here very important question most of the students will worry about it and will spend a lot of time to solve this listen so we need the effective capacitance of the circuit we need effective capacitance of the circuit all right and let's move on so this is a and this is b point so let's talk about this is first one and this is second and it is third and it is fourth. There are four capacitors are connected. The easiest way of solving this question. Look at this. And this first capacitor is connected between A. See there is no other capacitor. Okay. Directly you can consider that. The first capacitor is connected between A and this is the point let's suppose X. Second capacitor is connected between X and A right okay i'm writing the same so this is the first capacitor connected between a and x right second capacitor is connected between same x and a 
okay so this is a x okay mm. now so first one is finished second one is finished so first one is 2 microfarad second one is also 2 microfarad no confusions my dear students fine talk about the third one third one is connected between 2 x and b see here one x and the other side it's b so x and b so let's write b oh sorry let's write b somewhere here yes it is 12 microfarad now fourth one is the very important the fourth capacitor is connected between look at here so this is the end is connected to what so a one end is connected to a another end is connected to b see this this is what the fourth capacitor connection no confusions so fourth capacitor is 12 microfarad now it is so simple to do that now it's so simple to do that yes sir no because this is 2 microfarad 2 microfarad 4 effective i'm talking about capacitors just adding if they are in parallel it's a 4 and this is 12 right so 4 into 12 by 4 plus 12 16 <coughs> 4 fours, 4 threes yes superb so the complete effective resistance so here to here it is 3 microfarad and this 12 microfarad is in parallel the fourth one is not 12 it's 2 see 3 microfarad and 2 microfarad are in parallel. So then the final answer is 5 microfarad is C effective. Similarly, you consider these are the resistances. Exactly these are the resistances. Imagine this is 1 ohm and this is 1 ohm, 1 ohm, 1 ohm. You do it. Find out and write it to me in the WhatsApp immediately. Imagine all these are resistors. Then find the effective resistance. Very important model I am giving you. It will be a practice for you. Very important model, right? So do it right now and we will solve some more questions related to the capacitors as well as resistors. Coming back to uh, some more concepts and numericals related to capacitors. Imagine a situation. There is a parallel plate capacitor here. This is one parallel plate. This is the another. See, This is a capacitor. Positive terminal, that means the positive plate is here and the negative plate is here. The distance between these two plates is D. So what I am doing here is, I am filling this space with two dielectrics. So those two dielectrics are like this. So this is one dielectric and whose dielectric constant is K1. And this is the another dielectric and whose dielectric constant is K2. The area of the plate is divided into two halves. Okay. Now this setup will behave. The upper dielectric will behave as a capacitance C1. And this will behave as a capacitor C2. Now it is a situation like these two are connected in parallel combination. And the effective combination will be equal to C1 plus C2. And effective combination is equal to C1. So what is that C1? C1 is equal to, carefully observe, it's a K1 into C0. C0. What is C0 in this case? It's an epsilon naught A by 2 divided by D. So this particular part, right? What is this? Total area of the plate is A and this plate is A by 2. So that's what I have written. Plus C2. This capacitance is equal to K2 into epsilon naught A by 2 divided by D. And C effective is equal to, listen, epsilon naught A by D into K1 plus K2 by 2. We have got it. And now, once again I am writing C effective is equal to C naught into K effective. In this case, the K effective value is K1 plus K2 by 2. Right? For example, next case, if we, listen, if we divide this into the two parts like this. This is a 1 K1. So, this is the positively charged plate. 
and this is the negatively charged plate and here there is K2. So this is a capacitor here. So here what happened? This dielectric is kept at a distance at a thickness d by 2 and this is also d by 2. Area is A as it is. So in this case, this will behave as a capacitor whose capacitance is C1. This will behave as a capacitor whose capacitance is C2. Okay. Now C effective, if you want to write this one, direct this one. C effective is equal to epsilon naught A into D divided by 2K1 K2 divided by K1 plus K2. This is how you'll write it. Right? This is how you write it. Okay, listen. C effective is equal to C naught into K effective. K effective in this case has come like this. Okay. Now, let's move on to some numericals related to say. Related to this, what kind of numerical can be asked? Let's see this. Uh, here, there are two parallel plate. There is, there is one parallel plate capacitor. Positively charged plate is here and the negatively charged plate is here. This plate is divided into two halves and this half is divided into one more two halves like this, vertical halves. This is dielectric K here and dielectric 2K here, dielectric 3K here. You know the question is find effective capacitance of this combination. Like these questions will be asked. What is the effective of this combination? You know, these two are like a parallel combination and similar to the first case. And what is the effective K value you get it? Effective K value you get from K1 plus K2 by 2. What is the effective K value? 3K by 2 you will get from here. Okay. Now, this is 3K already. This 2, 3K by 2 and 3K, it is similar to this case. In this case, what is the effective, effective K value, effective dielectric constant? So, K effective value is 2 into K1, K2 by K1 plus K2. 2 into K1, K2 divided by K1 plus K2. So, K effective is equal to, it's a 2, 2 gets cancelled. 9k square divided by 9k divided by 2. Alright. So this one 9k square into 2 by 9k for your better understanding get the detailed way I am just writing. 9, 9 gets cancelled. K, K gets cancelled. And K effective is equal to 2k. K effective is equal to 2k. I mean look at it. So what we need, we need C effective. C effective is equal to C naught into 2K. Then C effective is equal to 2K into C naught. Epsilon naught A by D, right? If it is given area of the plates is A and D is the distance between the two plates and this is the final answer. In this way also the numericals will be asked. We are not leaving any model related to the capacitance okay and one more point my dear students i'm just rubbing this part i'm just rubbing this part sometimes a question can be asked related to common potential look at here common potential have a look at this this is what a positively charged plate and this is negatively charged plate so when it is connected to another positively charged plate, another negatively charged plate and this is C1, C2, it is at a potential V1, it is at a potential V2. You know there is a flow of charges takes place till it reaches to the common potential. So that common potential is C1, V1 plus C2, V2 divided by C1 plus C2. And at the same time, there is a loss of energy takes place in this case. A loss of energy is equal to, right? Half into C1, C2 by C1 plus C2 into V1 minus V2 whole square. 
v1 minus v2 whole square. Okay. Now, in the same way, when this positively charged plate is connected to negatively charged plate, look at this. So, this is the positively charged plate. Uh, when it is connected to a negatively charged plate like this, when it is connected to a negatively charged place, C1, C2, uh, V1, V2, in this case also the common potential will be C1, V1 minus C2, V2 divided by C1 plus C2 and loss of energy will be, loss of energy will be half into C1, C2 by C1 plus C2 into V1 plus V2 whole square. My dear students, there is a derivation everywhere. There is a derivation for this and for this. Directly, I am just giving you the formula. This is for your better understanding. As a quick revision, we have done this. Alright? And now, there are some circuit related to problems, related to resistors that, that we will discuss right now. Let's see some more numericals related to circuits. Here, there is a circuit given and by looking at this, you should understand all the resistances are R. It is a Wheatson bridge. When this resistance is equal to this, means the ratio of these two is equal to ratio of these two then this can be eliminated and you know how to find the effective resistance. It's so simple now. Yes and no. And other form of Wheatson bridge. See, so many times we have discussed. This is the other form of Wheatson bridge. When the ratio of these two is equal to ratio of these two, this will be eliminated. Then these two will be in series combination. These two in series combination and both are in parallel. Coming back to this. See the a very important and by looking at the question most of the students will leave it. No. Listen. A current I flows here and one branch of current I1, I2, I3, I4, I5, I6, I7 it goes like that. So in this case, the question is, what is the reading of the ammeter? What is the reading of the ammeter? Here, one thing is for sure, all the resistors are connected in parallel. Okay. Now, this is 9 volt. Across each resistor, so the potential difference is 9 volts. Then, I is equal to V by R, 9 by 9, each resistance is 9, so that's a 1 ampere. Through each resistor, 1 ampere current is flowing, 1 ampere, 1 ampere, 1 ampere through each resistor. Right. So will this 1 ampere reaches to the ammeter? No. The current will reach here, it will not go this direction, it goes towards the negative terminal. And in the same way, this 1 ampere will not go like this, it comes like this. So that means, except this 1 ampere and this 1 ampere, all other 1 amperes will reach here. This 1 ampere current will be read by a meter. This 1 ampere current will be read by a meter. This 1 ampere, this 1 ampere, this 1 ampere, like that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So total, the reading in this uh, ammeter is 5 amperes. I hope you understand. Next one. See, this is also one important model. So, there is A is here and B is here. They are asking find the effective resistance between A and B. All are R. Resistance each is R. So, find R effective between A and D. Let's see this. Imagine, see, in these cases you should imagine that the point A is at the positive terminal, point D is at negative terminal. Now, from this point, there are three currents are starting. One, two, three. Right. All these three currents similarly must reach this negative terminal also. One, two, three. Carefully observe. Imagine this is I1 and this is I2 and this is I3. Okay. So, I1 must reach like this. I2 must reach like this. 
I3 must reach like this. And carefully observe, my dear students, everybody carefully. I1 current as it is passing through this resistance R and coming to this. It's fine. No problem with I1. Now I2. Observe. I2 is moving like this, moving like this, moving like this. At this junction, there are so many paths for I2. But according to the symmetry, what we need at this point through this branch? Through this branch, we need I2. So through this branch, we need I2. Through this branch, we need I2. Listen, at this point, if current splits either in this direction or in this direction, if this I2 split either in this direction or in this direction, so complete I2 will not reach here. So that means this is not a permanent contact. Look at here. So this is a temporary contact which is shown like that. See now. See now. It's so simple. I2 current as usual come to this branch and I3 current goes here. It will split into the two parts and this part and this part moves here and reaches to this point. Again I3 as usual it comes to this. Right? Is it beautiful? Is it interesting? So very interesting concept according to the symmetry. According to the symmetry, there are some more numericals who are discussed in the notes. You just go through this, my dear students, and go through that. Okay, fine. Now, finding effective resistance is so simple. These two are in series. It is in parallel with this. And one, this combination, this combination is in series. Then this one, this one in series. And with this combination, this is in parallel, right? So like that, finally, you make one parallel combination and you'll get the answer. Okay, clear. Each resistance is R. Now, coming back to this. So this is infinite ladder circuit. The name of this kind of question is infinite ladder circuit. See here. 1 ohm, 2 ohm, 1 ohm, 2 ohm, 1 ohm, 2 ohm, right? See, 1 ohm, 2 ohm, 1 ohm, 2 ohm, 1 ohm, 2 ohm, it goes like that, till infinity. So what is the part is repeating? This part. This repeating part, effective resistance, I am just naming it as X. Okay. Effective resistance, I am naming it as X, that repeating part. Understand? So that repeating part, resistance, I'm just naming it as X. Look at this carefully. Simple. So the circuit I'm just redrawing. So here 1 ohm, here 2 ohm, and here 1 X ohm we have recently got. This is 2 and this is 1. It is 6 volts. Okay. Okay, students. Now. Look at the interesting thing. So in this case, generally the question is, what is effective resistance here? What is effective resistance here? Generally, listen. Simple. It is 2 and x are in parallel and this is in series. Okay. Now, across this circuit, what is the effective resistance? Listen. 2 into x by 2 plus x, right? 2 into x by 2 plus x as these are in parallel. Plus 1 is equal to effective resistance of the complete circuit, my dear children. Effective resistance of the complete circuit. Effective resistance of the infinite circuit is x we have taken. For that infinite circuit x resistance, just these two are added. Understand? Clear? Already, infinite circuit resistance we have considered as X. For that infinite resistance, these two only are adding now. So that means total resistance also we will consider as infinite. It is 2X divided by 2 plus X plus 1 is equal to X. I hope you got the point. So we have infinite amount of hairs with us. If Two resistors, one and two. See, if these two resistors, that means two hairs goes off. When we comb our hair, so when two hairs goes off, right? Will you be worried? No. 
because so much of air will be have. In the same way, for the infinite resistance, so only these two resistors are added up, so the net amount will be infinite itself, and that is what this infinity. And from here, you can find a coordinate uh, co quadratic equation. From there, x value you can find, and that's the answer. Right? Clear? Now, the same question can also repeat in capacitors. And you can try by taking capacitors here. That's called the practice. That's called the real practice. Now, this one. This is also most commonly asked question in the NEET exams and CET exams. So most commonly asked. So the model I just wanted to convey to you. Imagine, so there is a current I is flowing here, right? So this branch current I1 is flowing, this branch current I2 is flowing. The question is, find VA minus VB. This way questions will be asked. So for that, what you have to do is, imagine this is uh, um, 1 ohm and this is 2 ohm, for example. VX minus VA. VX minus VA is equal to IR. I1 into R. Next, here, Vx minus Vb is equal to I2 into 2. Students, don't worry. They will give I1 and I2 values. Or you have to find I1 and I2 values. Then, substitute here. You just subtract this equation. You will get Va minus Vb or Vb minus Va. According to the given question, you should move on. Right? I hope you are understanding the level of the questions, what it comes in the NEET and CET exams. All right. And we will be solving uh, some more questions now. Just wait. So last uh, some questions are left and we'll solve now. All right, students. And let's see the last three numericals in this capacitors and resistors together. The concept. Okay. We get here. There are 12 resistors are connected in a cubical shape and 12 capacitors are connected in a cubical shape. Right? Like this. What is the effective resistance when the points are at adjacent sides? Adjacent point. Two adjacent points. Any two adjacent points you can take. This one, this one. Or this one, this one. Or this one, this one. Here also the same. So what is the capacitance, effective capacitance between these two adjacent points? Are phase diagonal. Between this phase diagonal. See, A, B, C, D is the phase of a cube. Phase diagonal. The point, the positive terminal is connected to B and negative terminal is connected to C. Between these two points, which are phase diagonals, what is the effective combination of resistance of the cube? Here also the same. Body diagonal points. Between two body diagonal points, what is the effective resistance of the cube? Like that questions can be asked. So for that, the shortcut I have told you already. Phase book app. Here F stands for phase diagonal, B for the body diagonal that work out for both, okay? A stands for adjacent points, remember. In case of resistors, let's talk about F yes, means phase diagonal points. Between two phase diagonal points, what is the effective resistance? You know, that's a 3 by 4 times of the each resistance value. Body diagonal. If the effective resistance between two any body diagonal points, that will be 5 by 6 times of resistance. See, easy to remember. 3 by 4, 5 by 6. And the next one is between two any adjacent point. So the effective resistance of the cubical resistor structure is 7 by 12 resistance. Right? This 12, you have to remember it. And 12 remembering is also very simple. How? 12 resistors are there in this cube. Here also 12 capacitors are there. Now the same values 
how we will get for the capacitors f for the phase diagonal points effective capacitance is the reciprocal of this one it's a 4 by 3 c and here 6 by 5 c and here it's 12 by 7 c i hope it's easy and interesting right so to derive these each and every case it takes a lot of time it's not required for us even in the regular class itself we have not discussed but one case we have derived in the regular class Right? You just have a look at your notes, you'll understand. So we use the Kirchhoff's rules and we use the method of symmetry to solve these all the things. And the last question, the last question, have a look at it. The last question, effective C value, effective capacitance. This is a one plate and plate. This is another plate. This is another plate. Effective value they are asking. Imagine this is a positive terminal and this is the negative terminal. This is the positive terminal. Okay. So this plate will acquire positive charges. Carefully observe. This plate will acquire positive charges. And even this plate also acquire positive charges here. Yeah? This plate also will acquire positive charges like this, like this, like this. And this plate will acquire negative charges in this way. Have a look at it. Negative charges in this way. And this plate will acquire negative charges in this way. Okay. Clear. Now, have a look at it. My dear students, listen. I'm just naming it. This is the first plate, second plate, and third plate, and fourth plate. This first plate and second plate will form a capacitor. Have a look at it. So this is what the second plate and this is the first plate. Second plate, positive side. And the first plate, negative side. See here. Second plate, positive side and the first plate, negative side will form a capacitor. And the second plate is connected to X and this first plate is connected to Y. Okay. Now, let's see this here also. The fourth plate, negative side, it is connected to Y, right? See here, this is the fourth plate, negative side, which is connected to Y, see. And the third plate positive side, this positive side, this positive side. So, third plate positive side will be connected to X. See here. And this is the capacitor, parallel plate capacitor. This is another parallel plate capacitor whose capacitance is C0. And the effective value if they ask, so interesting, it's 2C0. And the effective capacitance is equal to 2 into epsilon naught A by D. That is the answer, yeah? How we have transformed this into this, that is important. Alright? And um, it doesn't mean that circuit problems are finished and we will not discuss again. No. Right? Current electricity chapter is not yet done. When while discussion, uh, while during the discussion related to the power, we will discuss the circuits. During the discussion related to heat energy, we will discuss the circuits and during the cells and the combination of the cells about the circuits we will discuss and, and of course we will discuss the circuits during Kirchhoff's last. That is also not done. Understand? Only resistors, pure resistors and circuits and capacitors and starting from the capacitors in electrostatics chapter and till only the resistance part from current electricity is done and your next class will be consists of the complete current electricity except the resistors including potentiometer and the meter bridge all those things right all the best my dear students for today's exam and stay safe and work hard this is the high time for your preparation and your date also has come for CET as well as for NEET and all the very best